Hi. Thank you for doing the interview with us. Yeah. So my first question is, yeah. how do you think the alternative data market will evolve over the next three to five years? Well, um, I think probably in several ways. Um, the alternative data market is kind of segmented like any other industry with you know, everybody from small five to 10 people shops to much bigger ones. But I think all of the data providers will have to invest more resources into the actual analytics piece. In other words, being able to help the buyers connect the dots in terms of figuring out what's really relevant. So we'll either have to invest a lot more in data scientists or capital or and or technology or just partner with firms that will be experts in that particular area and uh, we'll focus just on then getting the data. So that's one kind of trend I think that's inevitable. Uh, it's certainly been popularly uh, discussed quite a bit that there's going to be some in inevitable consolidation because there's literally thousands of companies providing alternative data sets. Generally what happens in any situation like that is the bigs kind of eat the small ones uh, or the smaller ones come together so there'll be some consolidation and um, I think also there'll be a change in the type of clientele that's going to be buying the data so right now it's primarily buy side funds I think eventually you'll see a lot more corporates in the game uh, in terms of being able to do more due diligence more in more sophisticated ways uh, also being able to do strategic decision making in more sophisticated ways. So those are kind of the three basic things I would say are going to happen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, my second question is, yeah. what do you think will be high demand sectors for alternative data sets? Well, what we're currently seeing, I think, is, you know, uh, probably three areas come to mind there as well. Um, there seems to be somewhat of a scarcity of data in business to business in terms of who's using what uh, enterprise software tool or uh, if you know who is using it, how much are they using it, and so what's the true adoption factor across the, the enterprises in using uh, one of the larger or even some of the smaller um, software as a service type organizations, whether you're talking about Slack, Zoom, or whatever. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot more demand in the business-to-business -business sector, just generally speaking. Um, secondly, I think, again, inevitably, with more things being connected to the Internet, everything from toothbrushes to cars, um, people are going to want to know more and more about the deployment of those devices, how they're being potentially, um, uh, how the market share battles are potentially working, and how they uh, see the deployment going, not just in the U.S., but in also in other markets uh, in Asia and Europe. So I think uh, that's another sector. And then more, more uh, presently, I mean, you have you know, a lot of attention and a lot of money going into this whole streaming wars area. Uh, and so... There'll be other uh, uh, types of scenarios like that that develop over time where there's you know, five or six big players just beating each other, trying to get the, to the prominent mar market position. And so as those types of scenarios develop, there'll be a lot of attention on that. And so data in that area will be very valuable. So, so those are my predictions. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All right, yeah, thank, thank you. you.